So I thought one of the things that I did notice on my Facebook consumer group is someone was really intimidated with the training. And for fun, I thought, let me show you exactly how I trained Vivi. Um, and it may not be exactly the same, but now in reflection, this is kind of how I would handle it. Look at what a goon she is. If you like anything on this channel, please like and subscribe to it. So step one of dog training. And by the way, I'm not a trainer. I'm an owner who has a dog, and I'm just sharing with you what I would do. And anything that I'm sharing is all stuff that I've researched and applied. Um, I can tell you that typical dog trainers will probably tell you this, but if you have a dog trainer who's guiding you in a different direction, by all means, listen to the professional. So number one, exercise your dog. Your dog has a ton of energy, just like my kid has a ton of energy. And if I want them to be successful, I try to make sure that they are well exercised. Vivi will last for 15 minutes. Uh, while I toss something, she brings it back, and then I have to chase her. Uh, but that is what works for her. After that 15 minutes, and her brain is sort of calm, and she can kind of relax, I give her a few minutes, and I make sure there are, number two, no distractions. So, especially if I'm training a dog the first time, you know, I don't want necessarily my neighbor's dog out. I don't want to be out in the front yard. I want to find a nice space in which I can actually do this training and so that they are focused on me. Number three, my training is only going to last no more than 15 minutes. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is lead her to an area, implement the sound. I'm going to lead her back and give her a reward. And we're going to walk around again. And I'm going to lead her to an area implement the sound, bring her back, and give her a reward. And that's literally what we're going to do. That is going to be our training session. I know it sounds crazy simple, but dogs are simple. That's why people like dogs, because dogs are simple. They just, they're living in the moment, right? So think about that, just how to really pare down that lesson so simple. We go, we hear sound, we come back, we get rewarded, right? Kind of that rhythm. Uh, number four. After your dog is done, it's time to rest. I can tell you that I want you to think of it as like being at work all day. And when you're at work all day and you go immediately home and you have no time to decompress, you can't really think and decompress about your day. This is the same thing for a dog. If, they, if you bring a dog into a training situation, even a 15 minute window, and then you reintroduce them to your home in which there's kids running around, all sorts of distractions, people, etc. you are not going to be as successful. So set yourself up for success. People will ask, how long does it take to train a dog? It is little things like that that have a big impact on a dog being able to process this skill. Now, I'd also say make sure you have a high-value treat. The truth is, for this video, I made bacon for Vivi, and then I ate it. So, um, we're using American cheese. That's totally a true story, by the way. Um, and that is going to be my high-value treat. I'm hoping it works. If it doesn't, I have to find something that's going to entice her more. By the way, not every dog is treat-driven. She is totally driven by her stomach, which is awesome. It makes life very easy for me when I'm training her. But my other dog, Ellie, uh, she was the ball dog. So, as long as you had a ball, she would do whatever you wanted to do. Okay. So here we're going to go. I'm going to go ahead and move my chair. I'm going to demonstrate kind of how we're going to do this. All right, so Vivi, we're going to put on a long collar. Uh, also, I'm going to make sure her collar's on correctly. So let's see. Look at this. Is the speaker up? Yep. The speaker should be up under her ear. Whenever I hook the dog up, I do not want to hook to her collar because there's obviously prong feedback there. Uh, I'm going to hook her up to her regular collar to bring her back in for a return. She's like, oh, and there's cheese there? Yeah, there's cheese there. Now, I can give her feedback one of three ways. So, we can either just walk my boundary and let the feedback naturally happen, and once I hear it, I have to call her back. I can do that. However, I'm going to suggest if you want full control, turn the feedback off of your fence and do it manually. So you'll actually be giving them feedback right at the right time so you know exactly when the cue is. It is up to you how you do it. I, right now, I'm going to actually do it using my border because 
my phone is obviously filming. And we're just going to kind of walk on out. Good girl. Come here, Rip. That's a good girl. Good girl. Really simple. Now, if you were actually doing this to your fence, that's why I say it's almost easier to have it literally right on the app to turn off the feedback so you're not necessarily depending on that and instead you're dealing with the manual correction. And as a matter of fact, I have somebody who actually has Halo on their phone and I'm going to have her do the manual correction so that I can actually reset her tone right to that sound. So what that means is we are both logged into the same account. I'm gonna turn off the feedback settings so no matter where Vivi goes, she's not gonna get any feedback. But manually, the person who's actually standing there can actually do it right there on the spot and then I can call her back. Okay, so all of our fences are off. And basically, all she's going to do is touch prevention when I want her to touch prevention. When she hears that sound, she needs to return back to me, and that's how she gets her treat. So when, you, when I want you to do prevention, I'm just going to raise my hand up. Okay? So we're going to walk out this way. So the whole point though is that again you're training the dog on the sound they hear that sound you want them to come find you and return to you now the one thing that we don't have going is the return whistle uh, and that's kind of her helper for knowing I'm moving in the right direction if she goes past a fence that prevention signal is gonna sound if she turns around and starts moving in the right direction towards you it is gonna stop any of that feedback that's going on so that is kind of how I would train and approach the dog. Uh, and that is essentially what I did with Vivi. It was probably a lot uglier then because I was a beginning user at the, be at the time. Um, but she's really used to it and she's just, she's such a great dog. So come here. You a good girl, she said. Can I get your paw? Can I get your paw? She's like, no, I'll just take the tree. 